Hello everybody, good morning, and welcome to yet another Z learning adventure right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today I'm joined by a pretty noisy crew of individuals. You already saw our teaser post last night. You should be just as excited as I am. Today is not going to disappoint. We are joined by our entire flamingo flock here at Riverbanks this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of make my way closer into the habitat. We're going to be joined by one of our keeper staff. Her name is Sam. You've already actually met her last week when we hung out with our penguin crew. I'm going to go ahead and take a seat so that way we're more at flamingo height. And let me go ahead and turn around the camera so that way you can see what's right in front of me. We are joined by our flamingo flock here this morning. Everyone is pretty in pink. Good morning, Stevie. Ray, nice to see you. Emily, good morning. Ella, nice to see you again. And let me welcome Sam. Good morning, Sam. Now, remember, you all had saw her with our penguin feature on Z Learning. Now, we're going to be challenged to kind of talk over our flamingos this morning. They're going to be a bit on the noisy side. But Sam is going to social distance with me. She's going to sit near me on the other side of the camera today after she gets all set up with our flamingos. Now, Sam, go ahead and tell us what are our flamingos doing right now? So right now we put out some special krill for enrichment. Uh, so we use enrichment to just stimulate our birds and they really love the krill. So that's why they're coming up really close um, and eating the krill. So you can see they're actually feeding upside down. So they got that upside down feeding. I have a friend that's hanging out right next to me. <laughs> But it looks like, so the krill is actually submerged in water. Is that how they naturally feed, Sam? Yeah, so they do naturally feed upside down. So their bill is uh, tipped that way so they can feed that way. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of leg on these birds. I'm sure we'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, they don't have feathers, so they can actually wade deeper in the water um, to eat upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and we apologize in advance if you're having a hard time hearing us. We can't turn down the flamingos. They are going to be that noisy the entire time. But good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Z Learning. Let's go ahead and take a peek in. So Sam has a couple of different containers. You can kind of see inside, you can see that floating krill. It's all submerged. Sam has another container here. That's a much better view of the krill that they're enjoying here this morning. Now, Sam, we got a couple of questions. I noticed one that zoomed in right away. It was, can flamingos fly? So that's a great question. They are a bigger bird, and yes, they can indeed fly. Uh, they almost look like an arrow once they're up in the air, and they can fly pretty fast. Uh, but here at the zoo, you notice our exhibit is open, um, and our birds don't fly out uh, because we trim their feathers. So this is something that it doesn't hurt, and we just clip those primaries uh, so they can't lift up off of the ground. Look at this great view. Okay, Sam, we have one of our younger flamingos over here. Can you introduce us to kind of what age we're looking at? How old is this individual right in front of us feeding? So this individual, uh, she was our first chick last year of the five that hatched. Uh, she's getting close to a year old, so she's almost all the way pink, but she still has those gray feathers. <laughs> you can see all that unique feeding behavior. We'll try not to get too many Ooh, drops on my phone. <laughs> she's starting to answer some of the questions herself. <laughs> Let's see, what other kind of questions? Audrey, age four, is wondering, do flamingos sleep standing up? They do, so that's a really good question. Um, I'll give them a minute. Uh, so flamingos will sleep in a couple different positions. One most common is on their leg. Uh, they do hold one leg up, and that is a resting position. Uh, they do it for energy conservation. Uh, so they actually save a lot of energy just standing on that one leg. Oh my gosh. Great question, everybody. Oh, Lizzie, age nine, was wondering, do they bite? Yeah. Yeah. So everything with the mouth can bite. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so with the flamingos, that is one of their defenses. You might see them like fend another one off just with bunking them with their bill. But thankfully for us, flamingos have a, a serrated bill, which is highly adapted for feeding. They're loving our microphone this morning. But thankfully, it is not much of a, a bite, say, like other species might be here. So Sam and I are nice and safe here in Flamingo Habitat. <laughs> All right, Sam, our favorite question got asked, why are flamingos pink? Thanks, Jay. <laughs> pink might not be the 
not be that common of a color on a bird, uh, but flamingos are pink from the food they eat. Uh, they get that color from a beta carotenoid. Uh, so if you think of the algae they eat, maybe some of the brine shrimp, uh, their liver doesn't process that enzyme um, like another bird's will, so their color is reflected in their feathers. <laughs> So that bright pink color is especially brilliant this time of year. In fact, you might notice in our caption, right now our flamingo flock are very busy with nest building. Sam, tell us a little bit more about this season and what all of our flamingos are up to. So the flamingos are probably a little louder than usual uh, because they are in their courtship behavior. So there is a lot of vocalization. Uh, there's a lot of marching around together. And we're finally in the nest building stages. So they spend a lot of time scooping one mouthful of mud up at a time to build that mound of a nest. Um, and the nest is mound shaped because in the wild, it would be in the water. So they want their nest to be out of the water so the egg can be laid on top. Um, here at the zoo, we do give them a variety of substrate. We use clay, mud, uh, we soak it every day for them so it's nice and wet and they can make those mud mounds. I'm so glad you said that, Sam. I actually just noticed Ava was wondering what they make that out of. So it truly is a mud nest. Home sweet home for a flamingo chick. <laughs> it's exactly the way they like it. So if you see those flamingos, they're flaring up their feathers. Uh, they do that to look a little bit bigger. If you think of maybe your dog uh, will put up their feathers to look bigger, uh, the flamingos do that to scare each other away. <laughs> this is our chick. She's a little personable. She's loving the curl we have today. <laughs> she's hanging out right next to us. So if you kind of hear those weird fuzzy noises, it's because she's trying to actually preen our microphone that's right above our camera right now this morning. So I apologize for the extra noise. You're getting a full up close encounter today. <laughs> Sarah Grace was wondering how many eggs do they typically lay? Uh, typically a female will lay one egg per year. You normally only see one egg on the nest. But if something happens to that one egg, like maybe it rolls off, maybe it doesn't hatch, uh, they might lay a second egg. Um, but there only is going to be one egg at a time. <laughs> So then here at Riverbanks, we actually had quite the successful breeding season last year. How many chicks did we actually successfully hatch here at yeah, Riverbanks? We had five, which is a really awesome number. Uh, typically, we expect maybe one or two. As it depends on the year. Sometimes we're not lucky. Sometimes the eggs just aren't fertile. Uh, but we did have five, which was really awesome. <laughs> so this year, of course, we're kind of waiting and seeing. No one's laid any eggs quite yet. It's, Obviously, it's a little early in the season, right, Sam? Yeah, it is still a little bit early. Um, they typically lay eggs in May and June, and we might get hatches in June and July. <laughs> Let's see what other questions we can kind of take in here. We're literally amongst yeah. the flock this morning, so sorry if we're missing any of your questions. Oh, Faith was wondering, where do flamingos live in the wild? Where can we find this species? Yeah. So this species, the American flamingo or the Caribbean flamingo, does live in that Caribbean area. So if you think of the Yucatan Peninsula, there's some feral species around Florida, the Everglades, sometimes they fly in. Uh, they are going to be in that tropical area. <laughs> Now this is just but one species of flamingo. So if you've noticed other ones that are more of like a pastel pink or maybe even a brighter pink, um, there are different species around the rest of the world too, Sam, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, there are six species of flamingos. Uh, two actually live in Africa and the other four live over on this side of the world. Oh, okay. I was waiting for this question. Sam just saw it over my shoulder. Lizzie, age nine, is wondering, why do they stink? Now, you're not getting that full aroma this morning at home, but Sam, kind of explain to us what that is all about. Yeah. So you are what you eat here at the zoo, and our flamingo's food is a fish-based food. So if you remember the penguins, they smell just like fish as well. The flamingos do have that fishy food. Uh, so we feed them a pellet mixture. It's like flamingo chow. So it's made especially for them and it does have a lot of fish base in it so that's where you get that full flamingo effect <laughs> And another good question we always get is why flamingos' legs are backwards. You see, uh, their legs are really long. It's a little dramatic, but they are on right. Um, if you see, <laughs> I'll point uh, to that joint right there. That's actually their ankle bone. Uh, so their knees are under their feathers. Their legs bend just like ours do, but it's just more exaggerated. Uh, so they have a really long foot, and they're essentially just standing on their tiptoes all the time. Uh, so that crook you see is their ankle, and those knees are under their feathers. Okay, so. 
Sam, let's cover that one more time because that's such a cool fact. Yeah. So if you see that bump on their leg right around the middle part, right where they're bending it right now, that entire thing all the way down to the ground is entirely foot on a flamingo. So those knees that you're looking for where you see that kind of backwards looking knee, not the knee. Yep. The knees are hidden up inside of their, in their plumage. <laughs> Let's see what other kind of questions y'all have coming in. It's so nice to see over 600 of you joining us live here this morning. Ella, age six, thank you again for another great question. Why do flamingos stand on one leg? Yeah, so you will see flamingos stand at one leg almost any time you're over here. Uh, and they do have a good balance once that leg is up, and it is to conserve energy. Uh, they don't use any muscle when they're standing on one leg. All their joints lock into place. They do save a lot of energy that way. <laughs> so it is their famous yoga pose that they're able to pull off. It doesn't expel any extra energy. It just is a great energy saver. Now, those of you who are wondering about the bowl that they just knocked over, don't worry. It looks like pretty much all the krill was eating out of it, so it was pretty empty. But we do have some characters that are hanging out right next to us. Here, we'll give you a quick view of who's sitting next to Sam. They Sam texture, anything new, like her. <laughs> I was going to say, there is no personal space bubbles when it comes to flamingos. They are not very good at social distancing. But all of this interaction is something that they're familiar with. We want them to be familiar with our keepers. But of course, them bonding as a flock is even more important. We just want them to be comfortable with our keepers working in and around them so we can provide them top-notch quality care. Yeah. So Ava was wondering, how much do they typically eat, especially as a flock this big? Yeah, so our flock, um, I'll use some number percentages. A flamingo will eat 5% of its body weight. Uh, flamingos are about five pounds total typically. So that's about wow. 250 grams. So we feed, them, we feed them a little bit more than that just to make sure everyone gets their fair share. Uh, but so if you're 100 pounds, that would mean you eat five pounds of food a day. Wow. <laughs> That is amazing to think of. Hopefully you're getting a nice close look. We got a pretty sloppy eater right now. <laughs> Yeah, so one thing about their feeding style, they're getting a mouthful of water. So right now this bird, 50, he's getting a mouthful of water, and they actually pump all that water out with their tongue. But the uh, bristles that Milo mentioned early, the lamellae on their bill, that will keep everything good inside. So the water filters out that way. Uh, so 50, he's getting a big gulp of water, but he's actually spitting out all the water and keeping all that yummy krill. <laughs> Okay, wait a second. That is a great question. Kara just sent in one. Do they have bigger vertebrae in their necks or just more? Uh, so their vertebrae are just longer and more exaggerated. Um, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head, but it is a longer vertebrae. If you see our black neck swan in the flamingo exhibit, she actually has more vertebrae than the flamingos do, but her neck isn't as long or as exaggerated. So you see that long kind of slender neck? I also saw another question from Weston that he sent in. Weston was wondering why they had such a long neck and if you check out the way they're feeding it's so that way because of those long legs for wading that they can get their head all the way down into the water and start to forage for food just like what they're doing right now in front of us. So Jackson if you're wondering why their beaks are bent down it's an adaptation so that way they're able to filter feed even better or preen my hair which yeah. they're doing right now too. <laughs> And I did see one since we're up and close. Uh, people wonder why they have numbers on their legs. Uh, so we have, 46, that, yeah. <laughs> we have 46 flamingos here, and that's a lot of individuals. Um, and since there are 46, they might be hard to tell apart. So that leg band acts like a name tag for them. So each number corresponds with a bird. Uh, each bird has a record, and that just helps us easily identify them. <laughs> I'm glad you got that, Sam. We're getting some really yeah. close views right now. I want to go ahead and just turn around the camera really quick. This is what my hands are busy doing right now. So I'm trying to catch all of these different questions, but they're very interested in Sam's hair, my hair this morning. So we're trying to get to all of our questions, but we are getting a very up close view here as well. So thanks for keeping on sending them in. I just caught one from Harper. She's wondering what color are flamingo eggs? Let's turn around the camera and Sam, what color are flamingo eggs typically? Uh, flamingo eggs are typically white and they do have a heavy cuticle. So if you think of chalk, the egg is really chalky too for a flamingo because that helps keep it more dry on the muddy island. Uh, so their eggs are white and when it hatches out, the chicks are actually white, at least for the American flamingos. And the chicks slowly will turn color as they age. They turn white to gray to pink. So if you see some of our chicks around, they still have those gray feathers that they're turning pink. Here's a great yeah. example of one of those individuals right here. You can see all those kind of gray, almost black color feathers, especially down their neck as well. 
Let's see, we're catching in a bunch of questions. Y'all are sending in so many today. Thanks so much for commenting in. Oh, there was one that I caught. I love that you're thinking they're just as silly as we are. We're having a whole lot of fun hanging out with our flamingos. Now I will say this isn't something that we always do, even though Sam, they get krill on a regular basis, do they not? Yeah, they typically get krill once a week and we do like to keep them comfortable with us in here. Uh, we do partial assisted rearing with our flamingos. So we do like our flock a little bit more calmer when we are around. Um, and part of that assisted rearing is to keep the flock safe. So in South Carolina, we might have a lot of snakes around if that you notice here. And to keep the eggs safe, uh, we will actually artificially incubate them. So what we do, we'll give the flamingos a fake egg when they lay a real egg and we'll keep that egg safe in our incubator. Um, but we will return that chick once it hatches to the parents so the parents can raise them. The birds are typically better parents than we can be and we like having the birds raise the chicks on their own. What a neat kind of half and half way of raising chicks. Such a cool thing. If those of you who've been following Riverbanks for a while now, almost a year ago, we had a good handful of chicks hatch right here at the zoo. Sam had mentioned we had five last summer. Um, and you noticed that we were able to do flamingo walks from our bird center all the way to habitat, kind of with that parent rearing and hand rearing that we do here at Riverbanks. Now, Sam, I paused on a question because I love to ask you this questions when Sam and I used to do behind the scenes tours all the time. This was a favorite question that folks asked. What type of education do you need to work with birds at the zoo? Yeah, so that's a good question. A lot of people do ask that. Uh, it's actually pretty competitive. You need a strong educational background. Uh, so me personally, I have a biology degree, but a lot of other keepers have a lot of different bachelor degrees. And normally that four year degree is very important and crucial to work in an AZA accredited facility. Uh, but not only is a degree important, uh, volunteer experience and internships and other experience is almost equally as important as well to be a little bit more competitive in the field. So it is a whole lot of work, a lot of dedication, and a whole lot of passion and drive to work with our amazing animal residents here at Riverbanks. We're quite the professional crew here at the zoo, even during our temporary closure. Now, I get a lot of questions. I'm noticing that quite a few people have asked, how long do flamingos typically live for? So flamingos are relatively new to human care. The 60s, they came in. Uh, so their age is still studied. There are birds in the wild that have been found to be over 60 years old. Uh, so birds can be long lived in uh, human care here at the zoo. Um, our oldest individuals are close to 40 here. <laughs> <laughs> Great question this morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in here at Z Learning amongst our flamingo flock today. Those of you who are just tuning in, we are joined by Sam, one of our bird keepers. We'll say good morning to Sam again. She has a couple of our youngest flamingos hanging out near her this morning. Now, all of your questions that we haven't been able to answer yet, we apologize, but we actually have a whole team of folks at home social distancing right now that are actually commenting back for you right now. So we'll get on those questions with comments and get you those answers as best as we possibly can. But in the meantime, folks, keep sending them in because we have so much we want to share here about flamingos. But Sam, is there one of your, share me one of your favorite facts about flamingos that we haven't already touched on yet this morning. Um, oh, so we already touched on the color, which is common. Uh, but one question we do get a lot is how do you tell the males from the females? Because flamingos Ooh, that's a great one. look the same, don't they? Um, so we actually get our birds DNA tested. So you can't just tell the birds apart just by looking at them. Um, so sometimes the males might be a little bit taller. Um, they're not necessarily pinker than the females. All the birds have the same similar colors. Uh, but we do the DNA testing if the birds are hatched out here. And that's pretty easy. Uh, once the birds hatch out of the eggshell, we will send those eggshell membranes to the lab and the lab tells us if it is a male or female. But say we don't have the eggshell for whatever reason, we can also send out feathers or maybe a blood sample and the lab can tell us if we have a boy or a girl here. That is fascinating, Sam. What a great example of all the science that really goes into caring for all of our animal residents. What a great example of not only animal care staff working together, but also working with veterinary staff and geneticists as well, um, and pairing out all these different angels based on their genetics and sexes. But those of you who are joining in, we are about ready to wrap up this morning here at 
flamingo habitat. Thank you so much for joining this Z learning adventure. We encourage you to check out our caption below this video for today's Z learning activity and see if you can kind of decode what you think all of the chatter was here in flamingo habitat. Use your creativity. And until next time, tomorrow, we're going to meet you at 10 a.m. for another live feature right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. But thank you all so much for joining us this morning.